so glad you came from Poland to have me before. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, not well known is that William James was deeply influenced by Marcus Aurelius. And if you look at the manuscripts and the back stuff, and so on. Now, um, one of the things that makes me uneasy here is that I'm repeating things that students have heard so many times that I get a little embarrassed by that, but others have not heard, so I push on. But uh, I love that part of the meditations, which I, I teach regularly when uh, the emperor says to the centurion and mouth runs across the floor this is really pretty much verbatim it's a little bit of a twist on it so centurion see the mouse I sire uh, centurion the mouth you me No, no, sire, the emperor. Centurion, how long was that with? Six years, six years, six hundred years. Life is a warfare and a strange centurion. And after fame is oblivion, the centurion. And then, a chapter later, he opens up with the bond, the store of bonds at the bottom of his home. So, um, James was much less strong on that bond than was Dewey. And I always say that if you want to understand Dewey, when he talks about a person, it's the Jamesian person. That's how you understand Dewey. The Jamesian person is in the Dewey social matrix. So, um, uh, Bruce Wilshire, my friend, that um, you and I and some others in this room as well went through a kind of harrowing, tough-ass experience when we took on the establishment, the post establishment in this nation. And we were as different as seven or eight people could possibly be. One line was, if Capaldi and McDermott agree on something, it's either about to be good or crazy. And because Capaldi and I were moral political enemies. And we, we did it. And one of the ways in which we did it is that we actually had a kind of, of eros of intent. There was error. Just as there was eros when Locks and I and others started this. Right. And that eros is the eros which I use as the affective. It's the affective. And I believe no epistemology is worth itself if it's not affectively driven. Okay. Affectively driven. And that's how I read our experience. And that's how I read experience. And that's how I read Dewey's pedagogy. And that's how I try to read my life. And I think, oh, Jake, that stuff is worth hearing. And that's why we did these books <laughs> and these texts. And that's why we had these meetings. Okay. Thank you. Maybe one more question. Uh, yes. Younger scholars don't know 
if they will get jobs, what they will do. I wonder, what can you tell us from your experience of living through that time uh, about how to face such a time of uncertainty and risk uh, as a community, uh, as you did with your colleagues uh, in those times? Uh, and um, uh, what you might say we should hope for? Thank you very much, Judy, for your voice. But I think that I could put the question to you. What can we do in the uncertain time? Because not to be certain is a part of pragmatism. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> uh, but I understand, of, of course, uh, your question. And it's difficult for me to answer your question because I am an aesthetician. I am not a social philosopher. And uh, uh, so this problem are uh, not so much my uh, 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 problem. But uh, when you spoke about the communist time and so on in Poland, uh, I want to say maybe something general, but uh, not so much connected with politics, but I think uh, very important. When I, um, I, when I um, uh, started my interest in, uh, in pragmatism, there was no interest, not only in Poland, but almost in the Europe in pragmatism. And uh, my friends at the university uh, looked at me that I am a little strange uh, because uh, it is so old university, it is a good uh, tradition, and so on and so on. And my heart was in this pragmatic way of thinking. And it happened that, that now we have a renaissance of pragmatism in the aesthetics. The pragmatic it is really, really leading idea and uh, I am now invited and to, 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 to different conferences. And I couldn't think about it many years ago when I, when I wrote to my dad Moss to send me the book, uh, do his book and, and, and his uh, book. So I would only to say that we should uh, do only this where our heart is. And it is very, very, uh, Important and don't think that if I it, it, it will be good for my success or not and so on and so on. So I I only will say and not not so much about politics. So before we go, thank you. Uh, last word to my <laughs> I want to turn the tables on Christina because Patricia and I went to Poland um, and uh, as uh, Christina's personal I was guest guess so and. Uh, well, the, the first evening they uh, had a sort of meeting and they had a table. This is a table of university. This is this is the University of Copernicus, <laughs> and and so they, I, I mean they insisted I sit at the table. I couldn't sit up on the edge. Patricia was standing there, so she went all the way to the other end of the table and sat at the other end. And I want to tell you, we felt we had just taken all the poems.